Hey guys, my name's Chris Trot. I work here on the TaylorMade Tour Truck. We are at Tory Pines and I am about to build Rory McIlroy's driver for this week. Come back here, let's see how this works. Players will come on the truck, we'll get the build together. Rory has selected the Sim 2 10.5. We are going for that driver because the way this club is set up, it's gonna give him a little bit less spin versus the Sim 2 Max. So for the conditions here that we've had early in the week with the wind, the way the course is set up, he wants that to optimize the ball flight. Now, we're going to use a 1.5 degree loft sleeve, which is gonna take this all the way down to lower when we place it into the club. So I need to find a specific face angle before I start. So I've cherry picked a head here, starting loft is where we need it, Starting lie angle is where we need it. When I put this loft sleeve into lower, it's gonna give me the perfect setup that he needs for this week. And you can see from the order, we've gone for the Fuji Cora Ventus Black Golf Shaft. He's playing it in a 60 gram. Now the reason he's moved a little bit lighter is to ensure that he can get the swing weight and the overall balance point exactly where he needs it. What does that mean for the golfer? What is the swing weight exactly? This is gonna be the balance of the club. When I place the head onto this driver, it's gonna give a balance to this golf shaft. It's gonna give an overall feel to the player. How does that impact when you or the player hits it? Well, it's gonna impact dynamic loft. It's gonna impact how Rory delivers the club to the golf ball. The loft on the club, when he strikes it, the dynamic loft is what gives him that penetrating ball flight. Now, we're going to tip this golf shaft one inch. That means we're gonna move the flex point, take a little bit of spin off this, the way in which the shaft plays. Straight in here. Cut the one inch. Tip grind it. Now, delicate hands have been doing this a while. Obviously in a normal workshop, you might take a blade to this, but I know how deep I need to go. Just remove the paint. That's it. Remove that paint job, okay? Move over. Not gonna use the epoxy yet. I'm gonna move this into lower. Tighten up my loft sleeve. That now sets the loft of this golf club where I know he needs it. Pop the shaft into the club. Don't worry about the graphics just yet. Back onto the USGA housing ruler. And you'll see with my finger, the sole of the golf club perfectly formed there. That's taking the middle of the sole and we're coming all the way through. Now we wanna get this 45.5 end of grip. He uses a tour velvet grip. I know that the tour velvet grip, the butt cap is an eighth of an inch. So I'm going to mark this to cut it. And you can see if you come in there, just under, one eighth under, 45 and a half. It's gonna give me the perfect end of grip length. Back onto our cutting machine. And then on here, just to get rid of the burr. So when you put the tape on and the grip on, no graphite fibers are gonna damage my hands. Our epoxy, two-part epoxy comes through, gives us this nice final mix. Pop that in there. Perfect. Line up your graphics at this point and you can see I have these curing cells ready to go. Stamp that down. Like I say, two minutes and 45 seconds this will be to dry. Clean off any excess before you place it into the curing cell. Make sure there's no gaps in between the ferrule and the hosel. Perfect. Unscrew your flight control sleeve. Temperatures are all set. They've been running all day here. Pop that to one side. And literally this is like gonna be cooking. Lock that up. Start the timer. Okay, that indicates that we are done on the two minutes 45. Pop that open, now this will be hot, don't touch it. One of the things I did actually see here when I was looking, you can see throughout the day, we've got some of the quick center beads in there. We mix those quick center beads into our epoxy so that it centers the shaft when you put it into your loft sleeve. 
very important. If that shaft doesn't go in centered, obviously then it's gonna give you a different loft and lie section, which you don't want because that will impact with the player, the dynamic loft, the way they deliver the club, the way the club sits, the way the twist face looks. It's all gonna give you different numbers. So tighten this up now. You can see I'm bridging my hand. Don't wanna touch that. It's hot, just come out the curing cell. Let's move back here. Grip is the next section. I have to get the weight of this golf club right. And here we are, Pandora's box. You can see that I've got all of our guys' grips in here, all with a number next to them. One plus one for Rory McIlroy uses the BCT, brush cord technology. It means the grip doesn't have massive amounts of cord in it, but there's enough for a day like we've had today, where it's been a bit wet and windy, hands get damp or get sweaty. This brushed cord will hold that. Now, this is a round grip. You can have round grips, you can have rib grips. Rory plays a round. One plus one, take note of that. Let's move into the gripping station. Align your face up down there as to how you know the player, player likes it. I've got the head sitting perfectly to toe towards the ceiling. Now, two tapes. The one on the right is sticky on both sides. The one on the left is a masking tape. You measure the length. When it's one plus one, you are building up the masking tape first. It has a different weight, but it, most, most importantly, it has a different texture to it and a different width when that tape goes on. So it's important you don't put two of the sticky sides on when it's a one plus one buildup. The other thing to notice here, I have this line down where the tape comes. You then want with your second piece to cover that perfectly. You don't want any ridges in the grip. These boys are so good, feel is so important. If you end up with a ridge or any ribs in there on the tape, they're gonna feel that, which is then gonna make an issue for them when it comes to how this thing goes on. Tuck the little piece in at the end, get the juice flowing. Now, some people have preferences. I have a preference when I build. I like to go twice on that. A lot of people out there will say, no, you only need one. Two is where I'm at, just so I can slide it on perfectly, because you see the cord, that slipped a bit, the cord will twist a bit, and I want to ensure I can adjust if it's not exactly how I want it. Now, when I look down here, yes, it's a round grip, and I'll see if I can get you guys in there to have a look, but I'm trying to line up the top notch with the bottom notch, so that they're on the top of the golf club, perpendicular to the club. Round grip, like I've said, flip it over, get your Golf Pride logo, going down, going through the Ventus Black graphic, exactly where you need it, okay? I know that that grip has gone on perfectly because I told you earlier, it goes and sits in a cap, but I also need it to be 45 and a half end of grip. Guess what, it's gone in there, 45 and a half end of grip, but you can give it a little tap, but you will feel it. Now, when we come back to the next part, back to our original order, swing weight. This is overlooked often, but it's everything. It's how the club balances up. You can impact the swing weight literally by two grams in the head. And you can see here, it's a fulcrum point. 14 inches from the butt of the golf club is where the swing weight is at. Now, we've actually got, as luck would have it, on the money, that has come out perfectly at D4, so I don't need to touch that balance point. But you can see here, I've got all these weights where I can move weight around the head. I can change the weight ports that have been split weighting by our en engineers on this Sim 2 to put them perfectly where it'll give the launch a spin like I've discussed. Don't need to touch that one, it's come out perfectly. However, I am gonna check the actual loft and lie. We move into this middle section. This is called the Dela Cruz you can find the actual lie angle, which will impact the start line. Remember I said Rory's playing his flight control sleeve towards lower. So I'm gonna just make sure I know exactly where I am. So when I pass the club to him, if we need to make any adjustments from there, I can get it. Face angle perfectly square at me. Top of the Dela Cruz in line with the grooves. Two pin measurement on the face. And this is down at just under nine degrees, and it's a 60.5 lie angle, perfect. Give the club a check, see that you're happy with it, how it sits, always use your own mind as a player, 
And then the final piece will be just to clean off my fingerprints on there with the 3M spray and pick out a head cover and obviously walk this thing out to the range. All fingerprints removed on there. I'll get that piece on the crown, face, underside, back up. Job done. And this is going to be ready to hit. Let's grab a head cover. And let's hope that Rory has some success out there this week with that bad boy.